This is a package I received about a year ago from a fellow named Ed Morris, uh, who's a member of the Antique Radio Forum. He contacted me, and he said, John, I've got this radio that I completely disassembled, tore it all apart. And he said, I don't think I'm able to actually put it back together again. He said, I mean, I've got it totally dismantled, uh, right down to the chassis, I guess. Cabinet, the whole works, is just in pieces. And he said, uh, if you want, he said, you send me the price of shipping, and I will give this uh, Philco 38-12. It'll be yours, just for the cost of mailing it to you. So I said, yeah, all right, maybe I can put it together. I don't know. So what are you looking at? I have never opened this box. It's been about, like I said, about a year ago. So our next project when I'm done with this Philco 630B will, to, will be to open this box up and find out exactly what's in there and make a determination whether or not we can put it back together. And if we can, that's what we're going to do. It'll be a great project for newbies, you know. But I want all the newbies out there who really want to learn something. It'll be make or break together. Because <laughs> I don't know if even I can do it. We'll give it a shot. I decided to take this variable capacitor adjustment rod outside so we can have a much better look at it. I've already removed the uh, retaining clip that goes around this little gear right here. And once you get the retaining clip out, it's simply a matter of taking your thumb and pushing forward. And the whole thing will pop right out. Now there's little ball bearings right here. Don't lose the ball bearings. Be very careful. There's three of them. You don't want to lose them. They will hit the floor. They will pop out and hit the floor. Trust me, you will never see them again. The uh, floor monster will gobble these things up and they're gone forever. Now once you get the two pieces separated, then you go ahead and pull the, thin, the smaller shaft, the uh, fine adjust shaft, out of the large brass collar. It'll pull right out. It's held in by these, uh, you'll notice it's got a tapered end. It's held in by the, these uh, bearings, and the bearings will squish down inside this brass collar once the entire mechanism is jammed down inside this uh, portion and once those balls are pushed in or the bearings are pushed in they will go into this portion of the uh, ad uh, fine adjust rod and it keeps it from pulling back out you can see right there this would be the way it would line up the balls would be pressed against this race right here it's called a race where the uh, ball bearings run around. So now it's taken apart. There is a spring down in there. I'm going to try to keep from taking the spring out because if I take it out, the ball bearings, I know this from experience, <laughs> the ball bearings will bounce out and luckily me, they bounced out on a towel like this. I always recommend working on something like this on a towel. If it does drop, it, it doesn't have it, it doesn't allow it to roll quite as easily. So what I'm going to do now is just clean, clean, clean. Primarily, I'll be using mineral spirits to, uh, to clean this with. I don't really need lacquer thinner for that. That way, it is, this is odorless mineral spirits. I'll be able to use it inside. I'll just pour some in the cap. And, of course, I'll be using Q-tips. And, uh, most importantly, especially on this brass, I'll be using uh, brass brushes, brass bristle brushes. Uh, I get them in Walmart, three for a pack made by Stanley, and they're in the paint department. And I'll tell you what, I can't tell you how handy these things come in from time to time. Yeah, it's just a standard cleaning process. Uh, take, you can see how nasty and, and dark these uh, Q-tips are from getting down inside here and really reaming it out good. I just soak it in the old mineral spirits and just go for it. Spend, you know, spend some time, you know, spend some time. And of course, uh, get on down in there in the main body of this thing where the ball bearings are once you get this all scrubbed out and get down in there get down in there q-tips are cheap really give it a good scrub and you'll probably wind up using several q-tips to get all that whole old hard dark uh, nasty grease out of there the outside surface of this fine adjust is a little bit rough so what I'm gonna do 
is take some thousand grit sandpaper wrap it around there and just kind of move it back and forth left and right like that until I get it shined up and a lot smoother uh, I want a nice smooth operation of this thing the outside of this one here is also a little rough and it you'll recall that it uh, it fits down in here like that so I'm going to kind of smooth that up as well you'll see that this one this one turned out very nice very smooth again thousand grit paper don't spend forever doing it just until it looks nice and clean and feels nice and feels nice and smooth and uh, I'll do the same with this all I'm doing uh, to clean these is I'm sticking it inside uh, making a roll out of the uh, thousand grit sandpaper and then just put it, putting it up in there and then holding the sandpaper with one hand and turning the uh, brass fitting with another back and forth rotating it some of that grease down in the uh, in the barrel of this wanted to down where the ball bearings are wanted to be a little wanted to be a little stubborn so I just grabbed me a paper clip and kind of scratched around down there and it loosened it all up now I'll make one last clean with the q-tips Okay, she's all clean, all looking good, and here's the bone yard of what it took to clean it. it. Took me quite a while. It took about 40 minutes to get it the way I wanted it. You know, the degree of clean depends on you, but when it comes to mechanisms like this, I recommend that you really take the extra mile to make sure it's clean. So let's put it back together now. Prior to reassembly, we of course have to put some grease down in there, and I've got some. Uh, pretty good quality lithium grease over here and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a paper clip and get as much out of here as I want. Not this much of course but I'm going to go ahead and take as much as I need. It's kind of hard doing it with one hand but I'm going to stick her down in there and wash it all around. I'm going to put some down in here wash it all around. Some on the front here and a thin coat here and then I'll wipe up any extra and then we'll come back and put it together. Step one after you get everything greased on the inside and on the outside of these things all the way around to include the ball bearings first thing to do is make sure all three of those ball bearings are there. First thing you do is you slip the pointed fine adjust inside the coarse adjust and you will see these ball bearings try to pop out that's because of the grease that's down in there and, and it'll, it'll uh, it may even pop them out if it does just pick them up and put it back in but you gotta get this this fine adjust shaft in as far as you can alright now we push the ball bearings down like so and then we drop the entire mechanism down in from the top here there it is all back together working very smoothly by the way the key to compressing the spring so this fine adjust shaft will clear the ball bearings is when you drop it down in don't let the ball bearings go past this collar right here the ball bearings need room to expand in order to let that fine adjust uh, shaft to get past the ball bearings if, if the ball bearings are down in here they can't expand because they're at they're up against the wall of this collar so your ball bearings will be about right here when you and it's hard to hold I know you gotta hold it and then you press down with your thumb or whatever on the fine adjust shaft and you'll feel it clear those ball bearings and then snap it on down in it's almost uh, I suppose you could hang on to the uh, brass if you wanted with a uh, you know wrap a good thick tissue around there and grab a hold of it with a good pair of pliers where you wouldn't scar up the brass and then that would keep the keep it in place so the ball bearings didn't drop down past the collar until you were able to clear it by pressing on this fine shaft which would collapse the spring at the bottom of this tube and you'll feel it you'll feel the fine uh, adjust shaft clear those ball bearings once it clears the ball bearings then you can shove the entire mechanism down into the bottom of the collar kind of is kind of something you gotta fiddle for it with be careful don't lose those ball bearings those ball bearings will try to pop out on you. Last thing you do is put your little keeper in there. 
your little snap ring or your little keeper and uh, that's it she's good to go and this one is now turning nice and smooth look at there let me see look at that boy just as smooth as silk smooth as silk good thing I hope I made that clear enough the basic definition of a capacitor is two conducting surfaces separated by a non-conductor and they hook a wire to one surface and a wire to another surface. Now those two surfaces are called plates. Now in, uh, that's the basic uh, definition. Now by that definition, if I were to take a pie tin or a cookie sheet and lay it on the floor of my home, I will have in effect created a capacitor. The cookie sheet is one plate, which would be this one right here. The non-conductor would be the floor of my home, which is right here. The other plate would be under the house, which would be Mother Earth, which would be that one. That actually forms a capacitor. Now for the gimmick capacitor. You see this a lot in uh, the older Philco radios, and you see them in some of the uh, shortwave receivers. At some point in the engineering design, uh, the engineers determined that they need a tiny, tiny bit of capacitance. And I'm no engineer, so I can't tell you why they needed a tiny bit of capacitance. I assume it's to somehow remove a given frequency of some kind that can only be removed when the capacitor is very, very small. We're talking the picofarad range. Anyway, in this particular radio, we've got this gimmick capacitor that runs from this gang over to this gang. But it's not soldered. Uh, when I first saw a gimmick capacitor a few years ago, I, I said, man, look at there. The factory forgot to solder up a wire to the gang on the, to, on the variable uh, capacitor. Wow, what a great troubleshooter I am. Look what I found. I found a wire that was messed up. So, boy, I'll tell you what. I got my old stripper out there, and I stripped the end of this wire, and I ran it through this hole, and I soldered that sucker in place. Job done. Wow. One thing less to worry about. Turn the radio on and man, I had nothing but white noise. White noise is very, very fine background static. And I said, where the heck did that static come from? Well, later on, after messing around with tubes and every other thing, my mind went back to this little tiny piece of wire, which at that time I didn't even know was a gimmick capacitor. Anyway, I said, you know, maybe... I wasn't supposed to solder that wire up there, you know. Well, I unsoldered it, and then white noise disappeared. Wow, talk about a lesson learned. I went out and started asking some questions at that point. What is this thing, and how come it didn't work after I soldered it up? That's when I learned about gimmick capacitors. A tiny bit of peak affair, very, very small uh, capacitance in the peak affair ed range was needed by engineers. So they determined that the best way to get it would be just to use a wire. Cheap. Cheap and easy. Got lots of wire. You know, when you're putting out thousands and thousands of radios uh, and, and you multiply each one times the cost of a very tiny capacitor, that can run, you know, the whole thing is bean counting, back even back in the old days. So this is how they resolve their need for a very small amount of capacitance. Uh, other times I've seen the same uh, gimmick capacitor, whereas... A one wire was wrapped around another. You'll see that from time to time. When I first saw that one time, I said, my God, look at there. Somebody cut the end off that wire and then just wrapped it around this wire here to get it out of the way. Where does that wire go? Well, again, I, I later realized that I'll bet you that's another kind of gimmick capacitor. Sure enough, it is. Anyway, watch for gimmick capacitors on the top of the uh, tuning cap for uh, uh, in Philco radios. You'll see them a lot. So how does that wire form a capacitor? Well, remember what I told you about the uh, two plates separated by a non-conductor? The uh, wire in the copper wire inside the wire is one plate. The non-conductor is the insulation around the wire which is orange in this case. The other plate is the metal thing 
that the wires wrapped around the metal soldering tab forms the second plate. There you go. You've got your tiny little teensy-weensy capacitor.